Let's just go ahead and start off where we ended off last episode. Candace, Charles, Landon, Mitch, Hannah. <sighs> Charles, you messing with the wrong female devil. I prefer you to go play around with Veronica cause that ought to tell you something. She don't got nothing nice to say about her mama. You sitting up there lying, talk about so she said all good things about you, knowing Hannah know that's a darn lie. And on top of it all, you sitting up there talking about some she said all good things about you and this, that, and the third. And Candace sitting up there some awesome. Oh, she was a good grandmother to my son. She loved him so much. She guarded him with her life. Maybe she didn't care so much. Maybe he still will be alive. Now, Candace, what we not going to do is th uh, throw that guilt on somebody else. That was all you, your son, dying. You forgot you started the flame. You sparked the match what made the flame happen. The only reason it got worse is because of you. Remember when you was calling yourself hiding from Mitch? Remember all, I mean, from war, from all that? Then when his goons found out it was you, Benny tried to protect you and all this, you forgot how this all started. Your son would still be alive today, to, um, till to this day if it weren't for you and your shady activities. And like Hannah said, you talking about some you want eight years in, but you better be, like Hannah said, you better be lucky if you get two. You dealing with a whole lot of devil there. You dealing with a whole fire and brimstone. You better go find you somebody else or handpick you somebody else. Cause you think if you gonna spend a year in there with Candace by your side, you got another thing coming. I'm hoping that's good news on the next episode where you told her to get out. I hope that one landing you was kicking. You might want to listen to Hannah. Because any woman that ain't talking to their mama, is something wrong with them. It ain't nothing wrong with the mama. Yeah, the little mama script or whatever, though. But, yeah, that ought to tell you something right there. And that girl ain't got nothing nice to say about her mama. Wish you in the good job you in not being a politician because all y'all are liars anyway. So I understand why you got the job you want. Then you calling yourself pushing or pushing your weight around for her to have her way, knowing she a pain in everybody behind like, Charles, why I somewhat like you? And I understand you trying to show Candace that you care and you trying to push your little power around the little bit you got you got going around with your little secret services and all that. You might want to go find somebody else to use that power on that you got, Mr. Lit, because that is the wrong devil. Like, good luck with that one. Like him to try to warn you. You sure you want that one? You saw her record that you had to scrub all the way clean. Just cause you scrub somebody record clean don't mean you change their face or they hair or whatever. Once a hoe, always a hoe. So you might have cleaned her record. Ain't nobody gonna forget that face. The only way Candace Young will ever die, and the only way you can clean her up good if you get her face redone, or uh, change her eyes around, or scramble her face around, or something like that. You think ain't nobody gonna know about Candace? Candace was a well-known escort, and she had high, um, high power. I mean, high power, high class attorneys and lawyers and judge. You think somebody? You think if you put her on your TV screen or air by the TV screen, you think it ain't gonna get out that she was a high class um prostitute, like Charles? You digging yourself a hole and you ain't even much in the office yet. Like, really. You might want to reevaluate your per your choice there because I don't know what to tell you, buddy, though, but just because you clean her up don't mean she ain't a pig. She's still a pig in the day of her and all that mixed up in the one. You have fun with that one, though. And um, what else happened during that scene? They went back and forth. She said she voted for him because he seemed like a respectable young man. Are you sure you want to put up with her and her drama? And you know she responsible for killing, having her son killed. And that's about all it ended with them. And she was so persistent on seeing, the, seeing what was going on with Benny. So Benny wasn't shot. He was stabbed. And yeah, Benny got so many enemies, like Mitch, like Mitch said, Mitch said, 
none of his family members or people of his family members that work for his family, they ain't gonna ride around on no bicycles with knives. Like, that doesn't make sense. Somebody else was after, after you and somebody else wanted you dead, not Mitch's family. Because I'm pretty sure they would have killed you or beat the brakes off of you and really had you in the hospital about to die. Like, yeah, if they was on bicycle and they were surrounding you and then all of a sudden they jumped on you while you was playing with your bad, um, um phone, that don't sound like a mob head. Like mob head on bicycle circling you, you playing with your phone, all of a sudden they on top of you, beating you down, then stab you. That's not a mob head. Somebody else is after you, Benny. And I'm not surprised or shocked you got people coming after you because you kind of did kill war and you kind of did do what you had to do to um get war off your back. So I think more than likely those are war people coming after you because you forgot you beat their behinds in that um, hotel room before they killed that little boy shooting up the hotel room. I think them war people coming after you, not no mob here. God name any any mob movie you look at, any movie that involve monsters, you never see uh, you never hear or see them on no bicycles shooting you up on no bicycle. If anything, they'll run you over and shoot you in. They ain't gonna just get on no bicycle with no arm, um, with no knife in their back pocket ready to stab. Nah. Them was war people or somebody else coming after you, Ben. And that was not Mitch's family. You might think that's Mitch's family. And don't blame Mitch for your problems. Br blame your own ass, cause that's your own problem that you got stabbed. And you think they want that money, they do not want that money. They want their money plus their interest. Just cause you hand them that money, you still owe them people interest. So good luck with that. Have fun with that. Don't blame Mitch for your problem. Blame your own behind. Cause your sister gave you a taste of that good life with them um houses. And I told y'all, so blame your own behind. And falling behind her, trying to protect her from war. And now you didn't got us a mess. And now you end up getting stabbed by some gangsters on some bicycles. That's some gangster stuff, not no mob stuff. People on bicycles stabbing you. That sounds like a straight up gangster. That don't sound like no mobster. Monsters have their own styles, and they all about gun or killing somebody in the most fabulous way or the glorious way possible. So that wasn't no um mob hit, but that was a gangster hit. And you ought to know by now that wasn't none of Mitch family. But you keep on thinking that's Mitch family, and you better pay them people for you do end up around here dead, getting out of the hospital, talking about some you want to go home, this, you going to take me home, or I'm just going to get on the bus and go home. You really trying to die, aren't you, Benny? You trying to die, aren't you? Okay, let's see how far that gets you, thinking you gonna get away. Mitch can only protect you for so long. Like he said, he can't even get in contact with his grandma. His grandma don't want nothing to do with him at all. So good luck with that one. And you better hope Mitch can protect you. And stop blaming his family for what happened to you while you were in the hospital because that was a gangster hit. That wasn't no mob hit. Mobs, the mob people do stuff way more better than that. And trust me, if they wanted you dead, you will be dead. You won't be in no hospital or barely breathe and got to have surgery. So that was them gangsters of war. Them people from war. That was from war side. That one for no mob. So you have fun with that. Good luck with that. With I hope you feel better. But you better pay them monster people their money before they get you next. Cause they waiting on you. They just waiting to kill you along for they can get you and collect you and get their money out of you. Either by death or by breathing or um, fitting you for cement shoes where they can bury you in somebody's water. So you might want to pay them monsters where they can get their money. So I'm just saying. So you might want to try that or... You might want to do what you got to do or whatever. So, now on to Veronica and Gay for Pain. Now, Veronica, I give you credit for being smart or whatever. I say you the smartest person on this episode because these people on this show are... They all dummies, in my opinion. You by, you by far the smartest one in my eyes because everybody else make the dumbest moves ever. So 
this is somebody you can't control, and as much as I hate gay for pay, well, I don't hate him. I just can't stand him, and his thirstiness, he about thirstier than Landon is, so I just want to say this is one person in your life ever that ever came across you, Delva, that this is one person you can't control is gay for pay. You let that man come in your house and be rude and disrespectful to you. Don't matter how rude and disrespectful you are to people, gay for pay, you cannot control him. I love to see him now. Now I'm at the point that I love to see him because I know he gets under your skin. You tell him you better stop playing with me and all this. This boy even got your man Fist and him fool and talking about some heat Thursday. You telling him to get out, leave you alone. Did you get Jeffrey yet? And another thing, you might want to get out while you can, Mr. Gay for pay calls. You don't know this whole Jeffrey job got your death certificate on it, buddy. So you might want to leave that Jeffrey up thing and count your lucky stars that you didn't go bothering Jeffrey. Um bother Jeffrey while he was in the hospital because if you did Mr. Officer might have would have got your behind too so you gotta count your lucky stars because after this said and done you gonna be in the body bag and have a toe tag on your foot in the morgue so you better leave that job alone and forget about her cleaning your record and all that so you might want to pull that over to the side and say no, I'm not doing this job and leave that crazy woman alone for she blow you up. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun with Mr. Gay for pay. This is the one person she can't rule around. This is the one person she can't control. This is the one person that can come in her house and do whatever the hell he want to. Can ask for food, can get drinks, snatching stuff out of her hands. All she can do is say boy and this and all that. And she really don't have a combat, a combat when it comes to gay for pay. So I'm getting to like him now that you can't control him and you try to control him, but you really can't because he's like a wild card. And, and Jeffrey had this same demeanor. Maybe he'll turn out better, but it ain't no hope and ain't no prayer for Jeffrey. Like Jeffrey. Um. Uh, speaking of you, let's go ahead and get you on out the way. I hope you heed Mr. Madison's advice when he told you to get away from Mr. Officer. If that wasn't enough for you tonight, he been calling you and contacting you and you been ignoring that man and the way he beat you down in that hospital in that hospital hallway, you better leave that man alone, Mr. Captain Saver Hall. That's one Superman you can't. Okay, Superman trying to save the world. You better leave that nutbag alone. You are this close. This close, my friend, to losing your life dealing with that nut. Keep on playing with him. I guess you like his little games. I don't know what it's going to take for you to leave Mr. Officer alone. You like medicine, you fun of my medicine, you better go on and enjoy medicine while you can. I don't know what's up with you, though, but you better heed medicine advice and leave that one alone and go ahead and, you know, do what you got to do and get that restraining order and stay the hell away from Mr. Officer because Mr. Officer is going to kill you. Medicine tried to warn you, and you talk about some you being a medical professional, you ought to know better. That look... Just cause you got a paper don't mean you're a professional. That's all I'ma say, Jeffrey. For you supposed to be a part of the medical field and addictions and all that and what's wrong and bad for somebody like you was trying to help Wyatt. You darn sure don't act like that when it come to your life. You don't apply it to your life. You try to apply it to everybody else's life when it comes to addictions and all that. But you don't apply it to your life. I don't know what is what is it gonna take for you to leave me. Mr. Officer alone. I guess when he run everybody out of your life, including men's in general, out of your life, then maybe that'll tell you enough is enough. Like, that boy is going to kill you, and I can't say I won't feel sorry for you, because I won't feel sorry for you. I don't know what it's going to take for you to leave that man alone and go on with your life. Well, David got a hard... um. Oh, excuse me. Well, David got a hard truth tonight. 
He doing fine. He doing well. He wearing suppression um, bandages now. He doing fine. He ready to go. Um, he wasn't here for what Jeffrey told him that Erica was using you. She was sitting on you by Candace and Veronica and basically them two tag team together because you, you they come in enemy and they want to get you back. So Erica was kind of using you. You better be glad you didn't get in too deep. You just got enough to get your ankles covered up with water, but you better be lucky and I know you were shocked and you pissed your pants when Jeffrey told you this, that she was playing you this whole entire time. And you want him to talk to Candace to get more information on what's going on, though. But, yeah, you might want to be lucky and thank your lucky stars that you didn't get in too deep. Like a marriage, she getting pregnant. You talking about marrying her, making her your wife, this, that, and that. You better be lucky. Like I told her when she was alive, if you give her a rain, she better swallow that and go pawn it to the nearest pawn shop. And when you ask where it said, say, oh, baby, I lost it. I was washing dishes and it slipped off my hand and went down the sink. You better come up with a better lie and say that little piece of money or piece of change on the side and get your behind out of um Savannah. I think that's where y'all in Georgia. You better hit the town as hard as you can, getting the hell away from Georgia. Like I said, David, you better be lucky, and you better be lucky that you ain't get in too deep. But yeah, Mr. Officer and Paul Madison, you got to deal with Jeffrey F. Phelps. Jeffrey then elfed up and now you dealing with it. Like this man didn't destroy your whole entire car. Then with you with you on the phone talking to Jeffrey, that probably made him ten times more madder and made him swing that um, tire iron tire iron at your face like that. Probably mess you up badly. And ain't no ain't no telling what the hell he ain't gonna do to you. So good luck, Mr. Madison. And I hope it ain't too bad for you. Um, yeah, now we to the choirs. We, yeah, we to the choirs. So, Thirst is still trying to get out. He managed to get out this time around. Didn't realize other Thirsty, Sarah, now that she caught Jim not trying to help her, not answering her calls of text. She's sitting up there in the house waiting on him. Why trying to talk her into going getting drugs and he didn't sweet talk to her talking about some I help you once you get a package from me. That um bodyguard said, um, you get that package, you're going to jail. She said, What do you mean? He said, You know what I mean. Like he finally sleeping on out of there and Sarah, you better go hide under somebody to rock it rock and hope to um FBI or whoever coming after you to arrest you, you better hope that you be, you be uh, covered up well to not be get caught cause you one foot away from getting locked up with Jim and Catherine and David and everybody else that was involved in Jennifer Salison murder and you helping tampering with evidence, playing with the evidence, tampering with the evidence, um, what is it, tampering with evidence, um, you weren't leaving the scene of a crime. Tampering with evidence. Um, something else it is. I forgot all that. But, honey, you in a whole world of trouble. And basically, Jim sought you up. And he ain't trying to get you out of trouble. Just so you know that. You in trouble. And you not getting out of trouble so, sweetie. You might as well stop trying to get Jim to help you. Because he can't even much help his own behind right now. So, good luck to you and I. Hope you don't drop the soap because you was a dummy in the first place dealing with Jim, letting him use you, let him set you up like that. So you better have some money to get you a good lawyer and turn evidence against Jim if you have to. If you have to sign like a canary or Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston, you better get ready to get your lungs and get your vocals right and start singing. You better sing better than Whitney Houston on her best day. Or uh, better yet, Mariah Carey, Jennifer Hudson. 
you better sing your soul out. That's all I better say. You better act like you win in a singing competition. You better get them vocals right. Because it look like you're going to be doing a whole lot of screaming and hollering just to get them vocals right. To be on uh, to make your song hit number one. And I hope that some, somehow the police forgive you for turning your backs on them for another criminal that they've been trying to catch ever since season one. And now that they almost had him, now you didn't mess around and temper with the evidence so Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, anybody else, Kiki Wye, you better get them vocals and evoke them all in the one body and get the singing and sing your lungs out. That's about all I can say for you, Sarah. Catherine, I have no words for you. None at all. Like, enjoy it. Like, how do the, how does that make you feel like the only way you can get back at Jim is do the things he doing trying to have a threesome in there with three men with two men how does that make you feel knowing that I, the only way you can get back at Jim is have sex with two other men that don't want you and only using you to turn your hotel into a prostitution ring like how does that make, how, how do you really feel, Catherine? That's the only way you can hit that old man in the gut that's going to hurt him. And I see you love the fact that when he get jealous and the way that he was acting and all mad and upset. But the previous episode, he said, whoever want her, they can have her. I don't care about her. Better me than, better on them than me having sex with them. Now all of a sudden, you didn't bust up in the room thinking you scared somebody. Well, you did kind of scared of two stooges. So I'm going to give you your props that you scared the living hell out of them. So... But Catherine, don't pat yourself on the back too hard. You just playing. You just getting down in the mud with him and getting dirty, running around in the mud with him. Like, y'all in a loveless marriage. He ain't hitting you. He hitting other people. You trying to count what number this is, here, number 14, 15, 16. You talk about you on number six and number seven. Like, how empowering does that make you feel knowing that you got to get down in the mud with your husband? You got to go have sex with two other men that don't want you. And you calling yourself being in control and enjoy rolling around in the mud, Catherine. It, just enjoy it. Like, I ain't going to much give you no props or nothing. And while you acting like you barely bad behind in that bed, talk about some you don't care about gender for status and murder, you better give a darn about that murder. Because if it wasn't for you... There wouldn't be no crime to cover up, or Jim wouldn't need no informer, but um, need no informant for her to be taking evidence out the evidence room to use against y'all. So while you sitting up there in the bed, relaxing, drinking your champagne or wine or whatever the hell that was, you would drink. I think it was wine. You better get up and give a darn. You better give a darn about that evidence and uh, how y'all all can go to jail at one time. You better care, even if you don't care at that moment. You better count the 10 and jump back to reality and realize that you in just as much as trouble as Jim being, and David is too. So while you enjoying your afterglow, after them two mans didn't have sex, well, they didn't have sex with you. If they did, you enjoy knowing two men don't want your body. So, like I said, enjoy yourself, Catherine. How successful do you feel running around in the mud with a dirty old man like Jim? And the only way he can get some is he don't want you, but he got to pay for what he want, meaning he got to have sex with um prostitutes. People that he throw his little old man body in and using his name to get whatever, you know, somebody else's body he want that's not yours. Like, how successful do you really feel? Like, enjoy. I hope that make you sleep good at, at night. Anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.